Women's basketball is the focus today on Any 10 Now, the podcast. We are joined by Pace Setters forward, Tower Lord. Off to a great start this season. As we record this, she is the Any 10 Women's Basketball Player of the Week. So, Tower, first off, congratulations on that. Uh, walk me through what the start of your season has been like. Oh, my gosh. It has been quite the adjustment. I feel like I have definitely kind of stepped into more of a leadership role on the team. So I've been trying to, you know, talk to my teammates and, you know, try to see where everyone's head, head is at. But I think we've started off the season pretty good, pretty strong. Like we're six and all right now, which is a great start compared to last year. Um, we were a relatively young team last year. So I think, no, we have like, you know, we built a certain type of chemistry and everybody kind of knows what we want and what we want to accomplish. So I think everybody's on the same page and I think we'll be pretty good this year. Let's dive into your growth process. Um, Cause as a freshman, you played a little bit, you got about three points yeah. a game, two rebounds a game, yeah. you jumped up big time last year. You had nine points a game, eight boards a game. You started to get into the starting lineup a little bit. Uh, yeah. Now you are a full fledged starter and you're at 13 and eight early on in the season. Yeah. What's the evolution been like for you and how much different does it feel now that you are more of a focal piece? It feels like it hasn't even been that long since I was a freshman. So it's kind of like, I don't know. I feel like the progression was like, it it was like appropriate. I think I, I, I definitely like the fact though that I'm like able to, you know, be more of a presence on the court as compared to my freshman year, but I definitely learned like so much in my freshman year. I've been like helped so much, you know, with, by my coaches, by some of the parents, by my own teammates. So I, I, I definitely like that. Like I'm able to kind of, have more of like a solid place on the team now and I'm able to like contribute a lot more where do you think you've gotten better most and why like mentally physically like what do you like? uh sure <laughs> <laughs> at anywhere on the court um I think points wise definitely because I was a like a like really nervous like about being able to score and being very like consistent with my points because I felt like they were very like up and down but I think I definitely improved a lot with like being able to score on the court more confidently and more consistently talking a little bit about your development since you've gotten to pace let's go back a little bit further because I'm I'm guessing that basketball was not your first um ball and basket sport uh, no. <laughs> did you start playing netball? Yes. I'm surprised you know about netball. I, I, there's actually a video of you on the internet shooting yes, a netball there basket. Is. <laughs> oh my God. Tell videos. me about netball. Okay. So I started playing netball like when I was in my country. Most people start playing netball in like primary school, which I would think is the equivalent to you guys' middle school, maybe like around, I would say like eight or like you know seven eight I started playing netball and I really loved netball I was on the national team the the junior national team I represented my country you know I, I played in a couple clubs so I had a really good time I I played like all there were like seven positions I played like almost all the positions on the court so I thought I was a really like versatile player but I definitely enjoyed my time playing netball but then basketball came along and I was like oh this is such a great opportunity like <laughs> Let me, let me play some basketball, but they don't differ that much, but netball is like, you can't dribble the ball. Um, there are assigned positions on the court. So like in basketball, everyone can move freely on the court. It's kind of positionless if you want to play it, but in netball is very much you, you have a certain area on the court. You're not allowed to go on. Like only two people on the, the court can actually score the ball for your team. So it's very like, like position focused so I kind of like the the freeness of basketball more though does it transfer like I know I know you said it's it's it, it's more free to play basketball but it, do the skills transfer like the ability I to would, hit a set shot right in front yeah I would for sh shooting wise like with netball you the person has to be three feet away from you so you don't have to like be as quick with your shot like you can take like three seconds and you can like you know, ease into your shot with basketball. You have to be like, oh no, my shot could get blocked. Like immediately they could take the ball away from me. So Play basketball for the first time. It's like, is she allowed to do that? Like, yes, <laughs> I was I was so upset. 
I was playing like the transition because it's like netball is considered a non-contact sport but basketball is a contact sport so it was very like it was a bit tough my first year trying to like you know not get upset at people hitting me <laughs> but I it, like worked out but the skills definitely do translate like with passing like I definitely don't think it would have been like a a good passer if I didn't have like the fundamentals of like netball passing and even with like um movements and like stealing the ball and trying to get around your defender you have to do all those things in that ball without touching the person so it definitely translates well I think into basketball walk me through the transition to basketball um because I know you you've been to New York prior to being a pace setter and that was through an NBA program <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about how you found basketball and, and what your development looked like uh in that way so I first got into basketball because it's not like basketball is not a very popular sport for women in Barbados, more for the men, but not as much for the women. So I got into it because I was tall. <laughs> and um, one of my teachers actually was telling me when I was like maybe 12, she was telling me about um like the WNBA and you know women playing basketball I was like okay that like that sounds interesting so I slowly started playing it and um earlier in like my early years like the M like the NBA you know partnered with um Digicel which is a communications company in our country and they were like we're hosting a, a camp and I went to it and I was just like you know I I didn't go with any expectations I just went because I was like this is like a good experience like what like the NBA is in Barbados like of course I'm gonna go so I got there the all of the girls were relatively new to it too but I stood out as a netballer so like I was already kind of ahead of the pack when it came to like you know just like passing catching shooting so like I just ended up like performing really well I guess and and they liked it and then I ended up in the British Virgin Islands with one other girl and I think it was five other boys and at in the British Virgin Islands camp now we had to um play against people all over the Caribbean and I got selected again Skylar Diggings was there she selected me I was like oh my gosh it's so great like so then I ended up going to New York, the, the NBA camp in New York where we played um Rutgers Prep, but it was it was like uh, it was just like happening like so like quickly and kind of like it was very weird for me. It was like very new like to enter into this like basketball world just coming out of like being fully into netball. And then after that at that camp, I remember uh his name is Justice, forgive me, I can't remember his last name, but he is like um uh, employee of like the NBA he works like directly with like picking and making like the camps and stuff so then I ended up going to basketball without borders in the U.S. again in New Orleans where we um you know we went to the NBA all-star game and it was just it was it was me being I I probably had max like two three years of experience for basketball and I was there with some girls now that are playing in the WNBA like a lot curious I'm I'm not sure if I call her name right but she was at the camp with me we were all like 15 16 like I remember um what's his name he plays for the New York Knicks now and he was on Duke University's team I I oh RJ Barrett yeah he was at the camp he won the MVP at the camp it was just so many names know that I'm like looking I'm like oh my gosh these people are like at the top of their game in their countries and I was at a camp with them so it was just really great. And after that happened, you know, I just, I played for my senior national team. I played for the junior national team and all this was happening before I was like 17. Tell, tell me about Barbados because it, it's funny, like reverse perspective, right? For for you, the best place was New Orleans. But I think if you were to ask somebody in the States, they'd be like, no, Barbados seems pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's it like uh, being from your home country? In Barbados, like... As I said, the, the the basketball scene isn't, like, big, but, like, they're trying to develop it, which I definitely think because there's so many opportunities out there and there's so many girls that are very talented that, that should have the opportunity to play. But I definitely love my country. I favor my country a lot. <laughs> so, you're uh, you're from St. Michael in Barbados. Yeah. You uh, 
you're the second most famous person from St. Michael. Uh, <laughs> how many of your teammates ask if you know Rihanna? That was the 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 hot question of my freshman year. <laughs> like there was not one person that didn't hear, oh my gosh, she's from Barbados. Do you know Rihanna? Like, no, I do not know Rihanna. And you guys understand there's more people in, in the country. Yes. <laughs> It's only like 300,000 of us, but still, like, that's a good amount of people. Like, I, I don't know Rihanna. I'm sorry. I wish I knew Rihanna. I, I know Rihanna's mom. I've talked to Rihanna's mom. That's, I, know I didn't her expect aunt. that as an answer. That's great. <laughs> but my mo- my mother knew her grandmother, but I kn- I know everyone around Rihanna. I don't know Rihanna. That's, that's actually kind of amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what do you miss most about home? The weather. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, um, on a serious note, um, probably my family, like, it is a bit tough, like, seeing, like, you know, like, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but, like, the whole basis behind Thanksgiving is kind of just, like, family and getting together, and I kind of miss that, but I do have my sister here, she lives in um, Manhattan, yeah. Oh, cool. So, I do hang out with her a lot, but I do miss my mom and my dad and my dogs, my three dogs at home. Like they definitely, I hope they miss me. You you mentioned earlier, you, you thrive in netball early in your life because you were tall. Um, is Tower your real name? Yes. And that's is another just question. just the perfect People... coincidence? <laughs> I guess. Like my, <laughs> not really, but my uncle, Sally, he passed away, but he's, he was seven one, And my mom is not that tall. She's like five nine, but her brothers are like six four, six three. My dad is six one my aunts are like six feet so it kind of runs in the family like so I it, I guess you could say coincidence because imagine I was my name was Tara and I was like five foot four that would be not great for me but <laughs> um last thing I want to ask you um uh, because it just looks really cool and I'm sure there's a story behind it so uh you won the prime minister's Barbados leadership award yeah. And were presented that at an Independence Day parade in 2019. Yes. That sounds like there's a lot to it. <laughs> Walk me through what it's like to get that honor and what that meant. Okay, so um we don't have a president. We have a prime minister, which is kind of like a whole like English thing. But um our prime minister Mia Moore Motley, she decided that year that she would honor um some of the leaders in the country. And there is a position that you receive in a school, like the teachers vote for you and some of the students vote for you. And you also kind of, you know, you have to present a speech and you're judged. You go through a bunch of like interviews and you're picked as what they call like a head girl or a head boy. And I mean, I think the closest thing you guys would probably have is like a student body president. But this person, like the head girl is like responsible for kind of like, you know, representing the school and they're kind of the the female face of the school. And then there's a, a boy counterpart, which is the male face of the school. And we like we we go represent the school at different events. We would talk, um, we present like speeches, we answer questions. So it's it's like a big thing. You kind of are like a little below the teachers above the students type <laughs> position. But I was nominated as um, head girl and she decided that year that she would you know kind of like give out leadership awards to these people and by pure coincidence I ended up <laughs> like she ended up being the person to give me personally the the badge um for the leadership award so that was amazing because it by pure coincidence I feel like that's the story of my life <laughs> by coincidence this happens so I feel like she we- We've got in, in 15 minutes, we've got first degree separations with Skylar Diggins, RJ Barrett, Rihanna's mom, the prime <laughs> minister. Like this is a life well lived tower. Yes. It just, it, I don't know what to say. There's so many other stories, but it's just like so much happens. That I'm just like, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> uh, what's next? What do you want to do uh, with the rest of your, I mean, obviously you want to play well and, and win, but um what comes after college? What are your plans? I'm trying to get my master's degree right now. So there's that. And after that, I, my parents want me to come back to Barbados. I'm not sure if that is the path that the good Lord will lead me to. <laughs> because 
things have just been I opportunities are raised and I just jump at them. So who knows if I'll end up working in the US or Canada, wherever. Like I'm just, you know, hoping to just be successful. Just like that's the main goal to be successful. So I'm just trying to take it like one day at a time. Like my first priority right now is definitely like to, you know, play basketball and to definitely, you know, try to do something with the the rest of my career at pace. And, you know, just to enjoy my time with my my friends and my families because I love my teammates so much. Like they're they're like a huge reason why I like play the way I play, but um and my parents, but I definitely, you know, just I'm trying to get like my master's and finish out school and have a good, a great career at pace. And we'll see what happens after that, because I don't know. Congratulations on the success thus far. I have no doubt there will be more in the future and uh, best of luck here uh, as you close out the, the calendar year of 2023. Thank you so much.